Anyways, let's go over to the... Uh, thank you very much, Equinox Xander. Let's head over to the Alabast Oracle. Do, 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 do. Captain Guard assaulted! Guard Captain assaulted. Early this evening, an assault happened in the decorated Guard Commander inside his own barracks. Captain of the Guard in the Middle District standard was slashed at, stabbed, and pierced by a gang of Barzan ne'er-do-wells. While little is known about the incident at this time, what we were able to obtain is that he ass <laughs> that the assault happened inside the guard post itself and that the city guards currently, as a group, has a group of suspects in their sights. The guard is keeping information on the assault close. It is to the chest at the moment and currently is not giving out statements. We will give the public update on information on this when and as we receive them. Our thoughts and prayers are withstanded and we pray for a speedy recovery. Thoughts and prayers. Elated Megalodon now has 171 followers. A Like, that is... That's great to hear. There we go. You deserve it, man. <sighs> Correction, 53. Okay, Sergeant Paw. We threw a short loop there. I'm like, really? That's that's amazing, you guys. Like, 120 you went and followed? <laughs> I was like, wow, that's really impressive. Thank you. 53. Okay, that's a bit more, that's a bit more accurate. Smidge more, but nonetheless, Connor, would you like to read? Would you like to choose something to read while I read off this ad for the First Bank of Alavast? Absolutely. First Bank of Alavast, open a new account today at Alavast oldest financial institution. Wait, are we only a couple of years old? Shh, earn 10 GP bonus for new accounts with deposits of a thousand GP or more. Ooh, I got like 14 of those. I can count now. Really, Borky, can you? Task says condescendingly. Yeah, Task. Flips him off. One, two. Oh! <laughs> Have you decided, Connor? Yes. I'll read, uh... I'll read... Hero what will you read? Eldritch Invasion. Which one? Hero Contains Eldritch Invasion. Oh, my... Oh! By Hazel Rumpelbottom. Once again, Lord Sir... Lord Captain Remus Corbeau protects Alabast from danger and an amazing piece by August Christopher. Oh my lord, look at that beautiful piece. Remy looks like an a action shot. Oh, what an action shot and the detail work on the bricks again. Oh my god, you must lose yourself in a trance, August Christopher, because I don't. Oh, it's so gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Continue on, dude. How does he do it? While the city is no stranger to attacks by strange monsters and the unfortunate invasions of the unorganized forces, of all organized forces, every once in a while there is an episode that chills the populace to the bone. Recently, a horrific monster arose in the High District and was chased through the city by one of Alabast's greatest heroes, Sir Captain Lord Remus Corbeau, Griffin Knight of Valithia. Witnesses described the creature as a mass of eyes and writhing tentacles that floated through the streets, propelled by an unknown otherworldly magics. It was terrifying, said Steve Jeffries, a local scribe, like something out of a nightmare. Like a squid crossed with another squid that felt no need to obey the laws of gravity. Other observers confirmed the story, repeating tales of running in panic at the sight of the creature, shutting themselves in their homes and shops at the first sight of danger, as all experienced Alabastians know to do. The fleeing populace also noted the calm and reassuring presence of the noble warrior Lord Corbeau who had apparently pursued the creature throughout the city and chased it from the high district to the lower district and back again. Mar Marta Braun witnessed the chase. I didn't see what happened since I ran as soon as I saw this squiddy thing, but I did see Sir Remy handsome in his shining armor and cloak, keeping pace with the creature. I think he was searching for a way to destroy it, and in the meantime, herding it through the streets and away from the populace. Many witnesses marveled at the mental fortitude of Lord Corbeau, during this running battle, apparently the creature's unearthly and otherworldly nature was not limited to its appearance, but it also possessed terrifying mental abilities as seductive whispers crept into the minds of unfortunate onlookers. Oh, gods! exclaimed Bor. I couldn't run fast enough due to my grammy gammy leg. And there was this horrifying voice in me head claiming it, was, it wanted to be friends and that I shouldn't run. I've... Heard of monsters like this deep in the mind. 
that try to get you to lower your guard before sucking your brains out of your nose. Somehow the heroic Griffin Knight was able to block out its mental attacks, though onlookers did say they could see the strain on his face. I only hope that brave lad is all right, <laughs> said Edelson. No man could endure that level of mental attack for long. After cornering the creature in the lower general districts for a while, Lord Corbeau chased it back to the high district where it disappeared. The Alavast Oracle has reached out to the Narazman Collective to explain how they allowed such an extra planar incursion to happen, but they have not responded as of press time. Alavast needs more heroes, like Sir Remy, Braun added. I'm sure he'll never get mixed up with anything shady ever. <laughs> awesome, dude. That's really good. Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to read off a couple things. Like, Have you ever been a part of a verbal or non-verbal contract only to have someone go back on their views? You have rights! If you have been betrayed by those you trusted and have been stabbed in the back, both figuratively and literally, contact the law offices of Frost Knox, G. Clerk, and Dept, located in the Lower Druidic District. Cold is required before consultation. We are legit, and we will fight for you! Our degrees are as sharp as our bang! Our degrees are as sharp as our daggers! Time is money, friend! There we go. <laughs> oh my. Come feast on the bounty of the season at the Romansion. Our cornucopia is overflowing with everything fresh, ripe, and dripping with nectar. Steak! Stick it in the cornucopia! Grapes! Stick them in the cornucopia! Drows! Put them in the cornucopia! Jerry! Put them in the cornucopia! <laughs> You joke, but that's one of the best fucking videos ever. Ancient, ancient stinger. For uh, we're going to end this stream with it, by the way, just so you know, because it's the first stream since Thanksgiving. Since. Pips, it's Questline Mysterious Visitor. Hello, Questers. With the help of extensive research and investigation, I have figured out what we now have in our city wall. The mysterious tentacle creature is a flump. Flumps are particularly rare sort of creature, usually hailing from the Underdark. However, don't let that concern you. Flumps are unique on their diet of good thoughts, which may stem, stem to why they have telepathic powers. Please note, despite eating thoughts, they do not remove the memory. They just... Mm. However, flums are affected by the thoughts of the company they keep. After all... Any thought may be considered a good thought based on who you speak to. Evil thoughts can corrupt the flump, while heroic or loving thoughts can make the, it a better creature. And seeing some of the, them, they company with the flump within our walls keep. I have full faith that this one will be on our side. And don't forget, everyone's a Hoka's Harrowing Treat Inspection. This year, the City Guard will be holding an annual treat inspection. Bring your bags of treats to be inspected to make sure it's safe for consumption. This year, it will be hosted at the Marcus Suite Rec Center, the night of Hoka's Harrowing. I am going to read Casting Madness. Plague comes to an abrupt right. end. I'll read that up, and then we're going to do, of course, Letters to Lady of Rosia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we go. It started with rumors of wizards leaving the tower, leaving a tower in the upper district uselessly mad. When a whole classroom couldn't stop casting firebolts at children on the street, then a warlock nearly let its patron enter the body to some bad bidding. And a whole neighborhood of our county district was seemingly overcome by some compulsion beyond our understanding to use magic at things that weren't there or things that weren't guilty. It was abject chaos, and five days later, it's all over. Like, one of the most incredible plagues in recent memory never even happened. Officials investigating, investigative adventurers, guardsmen, and Narrowsmen collective higher-ups alike are stunned by the sudden abrupt end to the affliction which went by the inf informal title of Casting Madness, which manifested as a magically inclined person old enough to know the name and methods of casting a magic spell doing just that. Over and over again, against the will of the caster, even when natural reservoirs of magic would have been long run through, other symptoms included dancing or fits of laughter that did not stop, and in some cases were merely whimsical or inconvenient, such as a young elven woman who danced in place 
in a haberdashery changing the colors and patterns of the hats. It even improved business for a time on that street. Other times it hollowed out homes with explosions, explosions of fire and ice and set cer certain streets effectively completely unusable to the sheer amount of illusion and abjuration magic being used. I lived in the Poggins Avenue in the Arcane District and a friend of mine thought the, the madness I won't, I, won't, I won't ever forget it. Forget it. Zinshi Jalark, a woman of 410 summers. Damn it! 410 summers, who recounted the personal story of the madness hitting too close to home. Bethel came out of her shop giggling like a school child and began casting Storm Smear over and over and over again. She had about three of them around her while she did a jig. It was simply awful, dearie. The streets were a mess, windows were smashed, smashed through, and merchandise was everywhere. But the look on her face was the thing I remember most. She looked terrified. She was crying. That's when I knew this was serious. And I went looking for help. She'd fallen unconscious by the time the guard was able to constrain her. Officials say the potential damage to the city was mitigated thanks to the hallmarks of dwarven engineering being far stronger than even scholars were aware. And due to the sheer nature of the madness, meaning a good number of those afflicted were constantly casting a counterspell. The madness came to an abrupt end following the mass rush of wizards and warlocks to medical facilities across the district with exhaustion, hungry, arcane, inclined citizens. By some miracle, no casualties have been reported. And they were expected to make a full recovery. Curiously, an abandoned wizard's tower door in the Arcana District was smashed in around the time the madness stopped. With an unidentified body cleaved in half, officials are looking into whether there is a correlation. Yep. Thank you so much. Connor, it's time for the letters to the... It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time for the letters to the Lady of Livrosia. <laughs> Dear Lady of Livrosia. My family has passed down an ancient battle axe which goes all the way back to my great-great-great-grandfather. But I did something really stupid and I don't quite remember what. And now there's a name I don't even recognize written right on the edge of the axe! I can't even get the ink off somehow and now I have to explain this to my father. I just know he's going to be pissed. I'm not sure how to deal with this. So I'm hoping you might have some tips dealing with the vandalism and or angry relatives. Signed, uh, Disgruntled Dragonborn. P.S. Better, better yet, if someone could give me the address of name omitted for privacy. I'll, I'll sort this out myself. Thanks. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm coming for you, motherfucker. <laughs> Wherever you be sleeping, you be waking. Because I'm coming. Dear Disgruntled Dragonborn, I love you. I'm not really very good with household tips. I have to admit that, the, that there are people that do all the housekeeping and such for me. And I'm not allowed to touch the cleaners after the time I tried to give Butterscotch a bath and got shampoo everywhere. I did ask one of the orderlies what they recommended for cleaning stains. And they suggested club soda, vinegar, and putting an ice pack on it and breaking, off, well, breaking it off once it hardens. But I think that last suggestion was for you to get gum in your hair. And perhaps you can take it to the Temple of Grama and ask the dwarves what they'd recommend for axe cleaning. There may be some specialty products. Dear Lady of Livrosia, I've always been the kind of person others could turn to when they have problems, and I'm proud of that. After I took on a second job, I'm finding myself more low energy and irritable when someone asked me to lend them an ear. I... I tell them to come back when I have more energy, but I feel like I'm never, it never comes. I feel like I'm losing my identity in my circle of friends, and I'm not sure what I could do. Signed, you know, out of steam. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, sorry. My, my internet cut out right. for a second. Signed, out of steam. Dear Out of Steam, I love you, and I also know exactly what you mean. Helping others can be draining, especially when you feel like your emotional energy is being consumed in another pursuit. Something that I struggle with is finding a balance between activities. Just because you can help someone doesn't mean that you should put their emotional needs above your own. If you're hurting yourself in the process, you need to have good judgment if it's worth it. We of often throw ourselves into helping others when we are really the ones who need help. You can love and support others without martyring yourself for them. This is why we form communities and families. Helping others is not a simple one-on-one -on -one interaction. 
It should be a group activity. Several contributing is little better than one providing all. Dear lady, I did it. I finalized the adoption process and have a new daughter. It's already a big change, even though I have been preparing for this for a long time. We have a new home, and I've changed my work schedule to focus on my true passion. I thought I had a pretty good idea of her personality, but now, wow, I am learning a lot about her and myself. I have really struggled to maintain my composure a couple of times when she's really gone off on a tangent. It's, it is like she's just overflowing with energy and going in ten different directions at once. I hope that I can help her find a fulfilling and rewarding path. Signed, Shadow Songstress. Dear Shadow Songstress, I love you. I love hearing about your progress and in providing this child with a forever home. Even though she may seem to thrive on chaos and change, what all children need is a sense of stability, and a good family can provide that. This basis gives them a chance to explore ideas and grow, but always have a solid center to return to when they need reassurance. I know you can provide this solidity, but don't be afraid to ask for help. You have others in your community that can journey with you as you support and teach this child. Share with her things from your own culture, but also explore things from her culture by, by learning together, you can reinforce your relationship and craft her an identity that is truly her own. Is that Grackles? Ah, you're right. Talk up. Kurt, 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 Kurt. They can't hear you. Oh my God. <laughs> I muted my microphone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to like have my breathing ruin your read. Oh, All right. Don't worry. I would like to thank everybody. This was a hell of a great read. Um, thank you so much to everybody at the Alabast Oracle uh, for putting this uh, together. I want to thank Sky On Air. I want to thank Skalfar, Froggy's Mom. Fenrir Lives, Jim the Rabid Cow, August Christopher, Saichi Evie, and Krakaton. Thank you all so much.